بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد before I go into today's khatra just an announcement that tomorrow inshallah I will do a 15 minute master class on decision making in the khatra tomorrow after Isha inshallah and that will be useful for you in every major or minor decision that you need to make in life, whether it is marriage, <laughs> careers, buying or selling property, business, you name it. I will teach you the basic fundamental principles of decision making which you can apply and I'll inshallah do it in a simple way in 15 minutes. So that is for tomorrow inshallah. For today I remind myself and you that one of the most important things in life is to know and be aware of what you own and what you don't own. What is yours and what is not yours. Now it might seem like a simple thing and you might say what's so complicated about that. But it is complicated and it is very important I'll tell you why. The reason why it's important is because what you own, you can change. What you own, nobody can question you about that. Right? So, supposing I own a car and I decide to take this car and dump it in a, in a junkyard. Right? You may think I'm insane, you may say he's a crazy man or what not, but it's my car. I decided to throw it in the junkyard, oh, junkyard, what's it to you? Right? You think I'm crazy, you may think, I, what do I care, I don't care about your opinion. I have a house, in my house there is a tree, I want to cut the tree, I cut the tree. You might say, no, 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 it's a bad thing, you should not cut it. Ah. It's my tree, I cut the tree. If I feel like cutting the tree, I cut the tree. I own a sheep, I decide to slaughter the sheep, I slaughter the sheep. You might say, oh, you're so, you're so unkind, blah, 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 poor sheep. No poor sheep, my sheep. I want to slaughter the sheep, I slaughter the sheep, right? You get the point I'm making? So if it belongs to me, I can do what I want with it and nobody can question me about it. You can think, you can have an opinion, that's your opinion, keep it. But what about if I have borrowed your car and take, I am taking it somewhere? Can I dump it in a junkyard? I can, but then I will deal with it after that, right? So if I am driving your car, I mean, whichever car you are driving, you should drive it carefully. But if you are driving your friend's car, and if you are a decent human being, believe me, there is something in your heart saying, whatever happens shouldn't happen to this car. Right? If it's my car, even if I knock it somewhere and so on, it's my, it's my story. But I take his car and I knock it somewhere and I got to go and answer to him why I knocked his car and what happened and so on. I don't want all this. Right? So you are careful. Now, when you are driving his car, are you enjoying the car? Of course. If you're driving the car, you enjoy the car. It's, you know, he's given it to you. He didn't say, go here, go, to, do what you want. But to take care of the car, he doesn't have to tell me that. He, I, this is something that I should know as a decent human being, as a responsible individual. If I'm borrowing something from somebody, it's my job to make sure that in my care it remains safe and it is handed back safely. <clears throat> right? Now, the reason I'm saying this is so important is because in life, in this life, we must be clear in our minds about what we own and what we don't own. Now, in this life, what do we own? The best answer to this question, what do I own and what do I not, not own, is inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiyoon. That is the answer. What do I own and what do I not own? The answer is inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiyoon. We are from Allah and to Allah is our return. So what do we own? Nothing. My life, I don't own. My wealth I don't own. My health I don't own. My wife and children I don't own. Nothing. 
They belong to Allah. Everything belongs to Allah. So what must I do? Look after it. Take care of it. Because, like I gave you the example of the car. If I go and I abuse it, if I go and I spoil it, if I go and I don't take care of it, then I've got to answer to the one who owns it. Because I have to return it. If I borrow his car, I can't keep the car forever. I mean, I'm borrowing it for a certain period of time. Right? When the time is over, i got to go back and give the car to him. Then he, he looks after the car. Oh, this car, I can't recognize the car. What do, you do? what do you do with the car? Looks like this whole car is something else. And this is the, in one line, this is the fundamental principle. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun is the fundamental secret or truth of our lives. Everything we have belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to return it. So while we have it, by all means enjoy it. Allah gave it to us to enjoy. Alhamdulillah. Allah gave us health. Enjoy your health. Enjoy your wealth. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your position. Enjoy your authority. Enjoy your rulership. Enjoy, enjoy everything. Alhamdulillah. But make sure you don't spoil it. Make sure that enjoyment is within the purview of what Allah permitted. If I am driving his car, I can drive it at 100 miles an hour. I, I, I say, oh, I'm enjoying it. No, no, hold on a second. Did the man tell you that you can drive this car at 100 miles an hour and do wheelies on it on the, on the highway, spin it around? No, he didn't tell you that. He does, have to, he does not have to tell you that because he's treating you like an honest, and a, and a responsible adult, you, something you don't need to tell people, right? They should know. He knows that you will treat the thing properly because you are a sensible human being. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us all of this and joy within the boundaries of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted. That is what our deen is. Our deen is a deen of boundaries. That, that, that does not mean that if we are tied together and we can't move. No, it just means these are the safety nets. When you're driving in a car, you wear a seatbelt. Nobody likes to wear a seatbelt. A seatbelt is a pain in the neck because it's, it's, you know, it spoils your clothes. It's, uh, it restricts you and so on. But the basic fundamental principle is freedom is inversely proportional to security. Right? In, 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 in the IT world, we said that freedom is inversely proportional to security. So if you have your, your computer, for example, you will have a password, you will have a biometric recognition, you will have a facial recognition. Why? So that nobody else can get into that without your permission. You can say, no, 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 all this is nuisance. I don't, I don't need all this. I don't want any passwords. So, no problem. Keep it like that. And next thing you know, somebody has got into it and all your data is gone and corrupted and whatnot. Because Safety is inversely proportional to, uh, to freedom, right? So freedom is inversely proportional. So more the freedom, less the safety. More the safety, less the freedom. But you choose, you choose the, 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 the route of security because you are a sensible person. You don't want to lose. You say, it's okay, I will put up with the inconvenience because of the greater benefit later. And that is what the deen is. The deen is to live our lives in this world with the understanding that one day when I go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I hand over myself to Him, inshallah, Allah will be pleased with me. Right? Because this life, my brothers and sisters, like we said the other day, this is going to end. We all know this here. I mean, I don't think there's anyone in the world, even, even somebody who's atheist, will, will deny God, but he won't deny death because he's seen death. It's not a question of, of denying. It's a question of saying, therefore, what will I do with my life? If I really believe that I'm going to die, how is that reflected in my life? That is the question. And that is what I want to, uh, to, to share with you. And to say that, therefore, when we look at this deen and we look at the Sharia of Rasulullah Wasallam. It shows us this beautiful way of life where we can enjoy our lives and yet live them in a way where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with us when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So we live our life which is honest to the one from whom nothing is hidden. That's the main thing. In Islam, the main thing is this awareness that nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not a, it's not a question of, you know, uh, saying, okay, I'll do something quietly and this will sound. No, there's no quiet. There's no place that Allah does not know. There's nothing that we can do which Allah is not aware of. And therefore, we live our lives in a way where, alhamdulillah, we, don't, we do not have to fear for that. That does not mean that we, uh, our lives are perfect. They will not be perfect. We will make mistakes. So if we make a mistake, we seek forgiveness from the person, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive, so he will forgive. But there is a difference between making a mistake and doing something deliberately wrong. You know it is wrong still. It's a big mistake. One is a mistake, the other one is a crime. Knowingly doing the same thing is a crime. And the crimes are punished. So we don't do crimes. We do. If mistake is mistake. We are, we are human beings. So we make mistakes. Ask Allah, Allah will forgive you. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to get this principle right in our minds of what do I own and what do I not own. The big benefit of this and tomorrow, maybe tomorrow we do the, uh, the other uh, lesson and the other tomorrow we'll talk about that. There's, a, there's also a enormously freeing sense in knowing what I own and what I don't own. And we'll talk about that inshallah. So the point I'm making here is we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore to enable us to live our lives in a way that is pleasing to him to make it easy for us to, to give us the suhula in that to protect us from our mistakes, from ourselves. And to take us when we meet him in a state when he is pleased with us.